Hi guys. It is just another blah winter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this frosty Tuesday morning, November 13th, 2018 here in Garfield, Texas. So uh, I need to head out and see if my little baby lettuce plant survived the first frosty night. But before I do that, I'm just going to do <clears throat> what I try to do every day, and that's just bring you the latest chronicle of the collapse. And I want to thank uh, alert viewer uh, Daniel, brother Daniel, for sending me this story from uh, <clears throat> good old Counterpunch. Counterpunch, uh, an excellent website. This is a, an essay by this woman I had never heard of till this morning. Maybe we should interview this woman. Uh, her name is Carol Danserow. And Carol what? Uh, is an environ... Carol Danserow is a longtime environmental attorney and organizer and the author of What It Will Take, Rejecting Dead Ends and False Friends in the Fight for the Earth. Uh, so anyway, guys, this is a, a long, involved piece. I'm not going to have time to uh, get to all of it. I will put the link on here and highly suggest you read uh, Carol's uh, Carol's essay here, especially anyone suffering the delusion that Democrats are going to fix this planet, are going to save this planet any more than Republicans. That the lesser of two evils is going to make any ultimate difference in the collapse of a planet especially in relation to climate change. And uh, so this is Carol's essay called Climate and the Infernal Blue Wave. Some straight talk about saving humanity. Again, I'm, I'm going to read parts of this, but uh, you will need to finish it up. I'm going to sit here and read about 20 minutes into this essay, and you can take it from here. <clears throat> Let me tell you about why I woke up crying today. It has to do with just how close we are to full-blown climate disaster. I was thinking about children who are already experiencing the horrible consequences of global warming. And I was thinking about particular children I love and what is in store for them. Most of all, I was thinking about the unthinkable, that we are on the verge of ensuring that most, if not all, Life on Earth will be snuffed out. Everyone should be tossing and turning in their beds, unable to sleep, experiencing the raw emotions that led me to tears this morning. This is not a joke or a drill. This is it. Decision point for humankind the UN says we have to turn things around within 12 years to avoid catastrophe. Others give us even less time than 12 years. Hmm. We need to act, and we need to act quickly. But we need to act rationally as well. <coughs> it will not help to run out and just do something, anything, to fight for our future. We need <coughs> to look honestly at whether the things we have been doing so far are effective. They are not. 
the Sierra Club <coughs> sent me a message a few minutes ago about how we need to redouble the sorts of efforts they have been leading and in particular the effort to elect Democrats. They want to mail me a Make America Green Again <coughs> bumper sticker which I am supposed to use to persuade others to vote Democrat. I always love these environmental activists, uh, you know, from these mainstream environmental organizations putting bumper stickers on gas-sucking cars. Anyway, moving on. Talking about Sierra Club Make America Green bumper stickers, I can't do that. We can't do that because Democrats take us backward on climate. Make America green again? It wasn't green before. Electing Democrats and pursuing the incremental agenda they and their fawning environmental groups put forth is literally suicidal. <clears throat> Lots of people believe that prior to Donald Trump, we were on the correct course. While things weren't perfect, we did make overall progress under Obama and under the Democrats, they say, and now we need to fight to preserve and expand that climate legacy. This thinking is plain wrong and it is dangerous. <clears throat> To save ourselves, we have got to understand that we were moonwalking all those years. We talked as if we were winning. We thought we were moving forward bit by bit. But in truth, we were losing ground dramatically. Like Michael Jackson, we faced forward and we moved our arms and legs resolutely as if moving in that direction while we slid rapidly backwards. Yes, Obama eventually talked about climate change and the need to address it. Yes, he adopted fuel efficiency standards and a clean power plan. He signed the Paris Agreement. But each of these measures and Obama's other climate actions were very weak. And the links, as the links above attest, uh, she has inside this article links to all of these other uh, articles. Uh, <clears throat> more importantly, they were overshadowed and completely undone by Obama's staggering promotion of fossil fuels. Obama wanted to massively increase oil and gas production and infrastructure, and he did. The statistics of the Obama climate legacy are truly mind-boggling. And then what Carol does is just give a laundry list of how Farrakh Obama, more than any other president in history, well, up to Donald Trump anyway, who will surpass uh, Farrakh Obama, how Farrakh Obama did more to uh, promote oil and gas drilling and pipeline construction uh, in this country than any president in history, including uh, Daddy Bush and Baby Bush. And I'm just going to read the first three about how Obama 
proudly oversaw the single biggest increase in oil production in U.S. history. Number two, dramatically expanded natural gas production. Number three, avidly promoted fracking. Two more, uh, massively expanded offshore oil drilling. And number five, approved the construction of tens of thousands of miles of fossil fuel pipelines and then down the list uh, talking about how uh, Barack Obama groomed Hillary Clinton that her number one job as uh, head of the State Department was to promote fracking all around the planet. Hillary Clinton was the uh, Obama's point woman to take fracking planet-wide. Uh, <clears throat> the Democratic Party's pro-fossil fuel approach was carried out at the state level as well as the federal level. Democratic Governor Terry McAuliffe of Virginia former head of the Democratic National Committee enthusiastically supported the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. The same Democratic governor from California, Jerry Brown, who was praised for denouncing Trump's proposed expansion of offshore drilling in federal waters, himself greatly increased offshore drilling in state waters. Jerry Brown eased restrictions on drilling and fracking, fired regulators who sought to make drilling safer, and ignored pleas to close the Aliso Canyon natural gas storage facility despite the massive leak there. We lost eight precious years when Obama was president. Instead of moving forward, we hurtled backwards, both in terms of flooding the world with fossil fuels that have led to greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, and in terms of locking ourselves into more of the same via massive infrastructure. It is even possible that Obama's actions and inactions have already pushed the climate to the point of no return. So how do we get fooled? People get confused about what the Democrats actually do in office because many environmentalists and other party loyalists play up token advances as monumental gains. At the same time, they downplay or completely ignore climate-destroying actions. They also play games with statistics. And then, uh, and, and then she breaks some of this down. Uh, how anybody can make statistics lie and then she talks about how emissions graphs are also used to spread confusion. Uh, more importantly, graphs used to imply climate progress in the U.S. don't account for the emissions associated with the huge volumes of oil, gas, and coal we export or the fossil fuel facilities we have financed abroad, nor do they reflect emissions associated with all those products Americans import. If we only look at greenhouse gases generated within our nation, U.S. emissions actually increased by 9% between 1990 and 2014. If we add in the emissions associated with the products we import, the increase becomes 
percent. What really matters is what is happening globally, where the overall trend for greenhouse concentrations in the atmosphere has been up, up, up for decades. Global temperatures have also been going up, up, up. All of this means that we, as a species, are going down, down, down. And Democrats, as well as Republicans, are to blame. It is clearly suicidal to continue the long-time dominant strategy of the major environmental groups, striving to get Democrats elected and working with them for their incremental reforms. Here is the truth. Carbon taxes divestment you know, from fossil fuel corporations, fuel efficiency standards, tax credits for solar panels, setting nice goals, and similarly, similar policy measures are not going to work. Nor is begging people to drive less, eat lower on the food chain, and otherwise tread more lightly on the planet, and doing all of these things at the same time will not make them magically add up to salvation. To halt global warming, we need to rapidly stop fossil fuel production, period. At the same time, we need to develop and implement comprehensive plans that directly deploy renewables, mass transit, and other climate solutions at the necessary grand scale. We need to provide economic security for all workers, in particular those displaced by climate mitigation, and ensure that every person has the capacity and resources to live healthy lives for themselves and the planet. And from here, uh, the hopium begins. Uh, the hopium begins from this point forward as, uh, you know, once again, uh, the, the bottom line is, in other words, we need to move beyond capitalism. We need socialism. There you go. Uh, neither the Democrats nor the Republican parties are going to move us beyond capitalism. They have made that abundantly clear. And then uh, you can take it from here. And so then, uh, you know, after all of this honest talk, how Democrats are not uh, going to save this planet uh, I any, well, a little bit more than Republicans, because Democrats obviously uh, promote the global industrial capitalist New World Order, she didn't use that term, uh, you, you know, the system taking down this planet. Uh, so instead, we're just going to get rid of capitalism and just all become a bunch of socialists. And then that is how we are going to save the planet and maybe uh, she won't have to end up uh, wake up every morning crying about all the little children. But anyway, uh, you can take over this, uh, this essay from Counterpunch from here and uh, draw your own conclusions whether socialism is what it's going to take to save the planet from environmental collapse. 
your call. But I see the sun is actually coming out. I do not believe it. The sun is coming out here on the collapse of global industrial civilization. So I'm going to get out to my organic garden and enjoy it while I still can. Well, I can see the greens from here are looking pretty good. So I'm going to go check on my little baby lettuce plants that I'm using to save the planet. Bye, guys.